Welcome to episode 5 of Race Control. In this episode we'll be learning how to drive quickly in the rain while minimising accidents. I'm going to state the obvious here, don't blame me if you try any of this in the real world and put your car through a wall. You have been warned. There are two main types of drivers that emerge when driving in the rain. Those that drive too slowly and those that drive into the back of them. You can improve the car's setup and your attitude to driving in order to avoid becoming either one of them, but racing in the rain will always be an inherently risky undertaking. We'll start with the setup of the car. Softening the car's suspension and dampers make the car more stable in the wet, and you'll probably need to set the brake balance further to the rear as well, as the car will understeer when braking. Don't set it too far back though, as too much oversteer will slow you down and increase the risk of spinning. You can also leave this if you wish, some drivers tend to prefer understeer when braking. Rain tyres are also essential for driving in the wet. Driving on slicks will be like ice skating, as the tyres will aquaplane very easily. That being said, full rain tyres won't always be the best option. Go for intermediates if it's only light rain, as the softer compound of a full rain tyre will overheat quickly. As well as changing the tyres, you can change the pressures to give you an extra advantage. Set them lower in light rain and you'll have extra grip, but if it gets heavier, you'll need to set them higher. This produces a small crown in the surface of the tyre, which can help to reduce aquaplaning. Finally, you have the basic elements of setup that we talked about in last week's episode. Change the balance of the anti-roll bars to produce understeer under power, reduce the wastegate if you can, and lower the acceleration lock of the differential. Some changes to the driving style are also necessary to be quick, but first let's clear up a common misconception. Drifting around corners is just as counterproductive when racing in the wet as it is in the dry. It may look cool, but you'll lose time and the chances of losing the car are much greater. Now that's out of the way, let's talk about the exception to the rule. Cars are fastest when operating within a slip angle, which changes depending on the stiffness of the car. This is usually tiny for purpose-built race cars, but it increases slightly when in the rain. With this in mind, don't be afraid to let the car step out slightly when exiting a turn. Just don't go too far out with it or you'll end up slow and unsafe. You can practice on your own with sliding. Take the car into a field and try to hold a slide by blipping and balancing the throttle with the steering. There are dedicated philosophies and methods with drifting that we may cover in a later video, but for now, just play with the car and see what happens. Practicing oversteer in a controlled scenario can help avoid an accident in a race. We spoke earlier about the full wet tyres overheating, and this will also become a problem as the dry line develops. Drive through the puddles on the straights and the excess water will cool the tyres down, allowing them to be more effective in the corners. Speaking of dry lines, the racing line in the wet is often different from the line in the dry. The rubber laid down onto the dry line makes it smooth, which is perfect for dry conditions but slippery when wet. Search for the best lines through corners, as the visual cues the track is giving you might not always be the best idea. AstroTurf curbs and other painted surfaces should also be avoided for the same reason. Their smooth surface makes for a very slippery experience. The same goes for grass. If you drop a wheel there, then there's not much you can do apart from lock the wheels and wait until you hit a wall. Even on normal tarmac you should make sure to be as smooth as possible with your input, as braking traction too suddenly can lead to a spin. There are times when you get a perfect storm of sorts, when everything is being thrown at you. Fog, rain and darkness can all mix to form a hellish driving experience, which causes accidents and makes life even harder. Here's a couple of tips for the worst case scenarios. First one is to avoid a crash by any means. Spin out if you have to. A spin is much better than actually damaging your car, so if something is in your way and you have to dip into the grass to avoid it, do it. The second is to use the rhythm of the track to get around in low visibility. If you can't see the corners for whatever reason, use the brake markers along with the count in your head to estimate where your braking point should be. Finally, make note of where the dangerous areas of the track are. If you find yourself struggling with oversteer on a particular section of track, there's a fair chance that others are too. Have a think about where a car might end up if it span out in this area, and try to avoid it if possible, even if you can't see anything there. Preemptive avoidance can often give a driver confidence and avoid unnecessary risk. That's all for Race Control Episode 5. Ideas are always welcome for these episodes, so leave a comment with anything you'd like to learn about motorsport. Thank you for watching.